Amen. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Okay, if I could hear myself up here, I'll be happy. Uh, just give me a little bit more volume on my monitors up here so I can hear myself. That would be great. A little bit more on my monitors. That would be good. Okay, what a wonderful presentation from our, is that the youth choir? Amen. Youth choir. Listen, you are ready for export. <laughs> we wish you could have you. Thank you so much. Beautiful. We wish you could have you. Beautiful singing. I continue to talk about the beautiful singing. Hope you had a good rest last night. Amen. And we give God thanks for waking us up this morning and giving us the opportunity to be alive here again. So there's a little change on your sermon title today. I think in your book, uh, I did send up uh, the title, Down Payment on Eternity. I made a little adjustment. We're going to talk about spot check at the pearly gates. And then tonight, when or this afternoon, when we get back, we're dealing with the last church. And tomorrow morning, the last sign. Those are the two next sermons coming your way. Uh, of course, I'd like to add my welcome to those of you watching online. We're delighted to have you. Uh, wherever you're from, some of you are going to bed now in the Cayman Islands back home, but we hope you'll be able to watch this service. We do want to recognize your presence and also, also want to welcome the leadership of our union with us, and we are grateful for your presence here. So, for the next few minutes that are assigned to me, I, I would like to direct our attention to the question. When we should have completed all our labors on earth, will we pass through the pearly gates? Or will there be something that hinders us? Bow your heads with me as we pray. Lord Jesus, give us wisdom and clarity in your words and speak to our hearts now we pray in Jesus name amen if you have been traveling recently you will notice the minute you walk in to check in to the there are a number of security checks and you'll see signs like this are you carrying prohibited items these items are not allowed in the uh, aircraft cabin you definitely going to come across these signs and they add stuff that you can't carry. If, in other words, in other words, um, if you try to pass through these body scanners, you know I hate them. Yeah, I, I really do. Every time I have an opportunity to go around them, I try. But these are body scanners, meaning for you to board the flight, you have to pass through that body scanner, and it checks your entire body. And you don't want anything going beep, beep. Because then you'll be pulled aside and you'll be, you'll be subject to some serious search. And the body scanners are there to ensure that you're not carrying any prohibited stuff. Right? So if you're clear, if you pass through the body scanner, then you are right. And my concern is when, when it is time for us to make it to the kingdom of God, Will we be able to pass through the body scanners? Or will there be stuff in our lives that go beep, beep? Will we be stopped at the pearly gates? So I don't want us to work here and then when we reach there, we can't board the flight to the kingdom. So I, I decided this morning to take the next few minutes to pull out a few pieces of the text, the text in the Bible and, and to bring it to your attention that these stuff will not pass through the pearly gates. So if you have them, or if you're involved in them, now is the time to dump them in the bin before you pass through. Is the church with me? Yes. So, so here are some forbidden stuff. Paul writes to the church at Corinth. Paul says, help me read. Do you not know that they, that they, that they, Unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. And then I like what Paul says. 
Then he says, do not be deceived. In other words, put it another way. Don't fool yourself. Ah, I love that. Don't deceive yourself. There is no way you can get certain things through this body scanner at the pearly gates. Don't de if you are involved, don't deceive yourself. You will not pass through the pearly gates. Involved in what? Uh, here is it. Neither fornicators. Who are those? Oh, you don't know. So, let me tell you. These are, these are folks who have sexual relationship before they are married. They won't pass through. Oh, who else won't pass through? Idolaters. These are people who have their own gods other than the true God of heaven. They won't pass through. Beep, beep at the scanner. Oh, these are no will adulterers. Yeah, who are these? These are married people having sex with people who are not their marital spouse. Won't pass through. Won't pass through. Who else? Oh, no matter what they, to they tell you about homosexual human rights, if you having sex with another person of your same gender, beep, beep, won't pass through. There's no, there's no gay rights in heaven. Beep, beep, not passing through. Oh, no, are sodomites. Now, who are those? You all know who sodomites are? Oh, if you don't know, you can Google it when you go home. I'll tell you. Sodomites, says Google, are those who have anal sex. Beep, beep. Won't pass through. This is Paul. This is Paul. This is Paul. Oh, some other people who won't pass through either. No. Thieves won't pass through. Nor, oh, this is a, most of you know these guys won't pass through. This is another one that will, some people will deceive their, their themselves. If you are a member of the church, but you are covetous, beep, beep, won't pass through. But who else? Oh, nor if you're a drunkard or a reveler, a party, lover, party, goer, or an extortioner, huh? You will not, help me read, you will not inherit the kingdom of God, no matter how hard you work in the church. Beep, beep. And then Paul says, and such were some of you, but now, praise the Lord, come on, help me read, you are washed, and you are sanctified, and you are justified in the name of the Lord amen so if you are if you are have been washed by the blood of Christ you have been sanctified meaning you are now stated holy and justified you can walk through that scanner with pride amen because the blood of Christ has cleansed you ain't no beep beep ain't no beep beep to the church in Galatia Paul writes same thing oh that was to the church in Corinth to the church in Galatia, he writes something similar. He says, now the works of the flesh are evident. What are they? Adultery, same thing. Fornication, same thing. Uncleanliness, same thing. Lewdness, lewdness. What's that? Oh, I had to check it out. It means people who are vulgar and immoral in their action. Go-go dancers and strip clubs people and people who are immorally vulgar and loose. Oh, Paul says those people won't make it. Beep, beep. People, idolatry. Beep, beep. Sorcery. Now, what's that? That's a witchcraft worker. Do you guys have hobby, hobby working here? No? I know voodoo is in Haiti. In Jamaica, they have some hobby, hobby men. Do you have hobby people here? No? No. You have witch doctors. Am I right? Yeah, what do you call them? Just witch doctor? You don't have a you don't have a name for them? Huh? Um, umanga. Guanganga. <laughs> okay, you can tell the Guanganga won't pass through. Won't pass through, won't pass through. Um hatred, 
So if you come to Nairobi Central, yeah, but you hate another member of your community who won't pass through, people who are contentious, beep, beep. People who are jealous, jealousy, beep, beep. People who, are, who love to outburst of wrath, the little thing. As you say a little thing to them, they explode. Oh, beep, beep. We can't, keep, we, can't, we can't have those people in the kingdom because they'll be fight up there. No, 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 no. Beep, beep. Is the church with me? Is the church with me? This is Paul. Hey, what, what else? Selfish ambitions. People who are selfish won't pass through the pearly gate. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. Dissensions and heresies. E envy, murderers, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. None of those passing through. Of which, Paul says, I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past. Help me read now. That those who what? Practice is the key word here. Those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. I want every member of Nairobi Central to be able to pass through. So if you are involved, if you are secretly involved in these things, even though you function at church on Sabbath, you may be able to fool the pastor and the elder and the congregation, but when it is time to pass through the pearly gates, beep, beep, that'll be too sad. So that's why I dropped the warning for you this morning. In Revelation, there's a little set over there, last book of the Bible, as John writes, Blessed, help me read, blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and they may what? Enter. So we have a little clue, a little blue clues that if you want to enter through that scanner into the kingdom, one of the things you want to do is to ensure that you are keeping God's commandment. Are we together? Because if you do that, you may enter the kingdom of God. Why? Because commandment keeping is not a guarantee into the kingdom. Oh, did the pastor just say that? Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Commandment keeping was not designed to save us. No, no, no. Our salvation is in Christ alone. Are we together? Commandment keeping is to keep us in following Christ. So if you, are, if you are baptized and you accept the Lord Jesus Christ and you do his commandment, you may enter through the gates in the city. So I would encourage everybody, to, if you haven't started doing that already, to keep the commandments as the Lord, Spirit of the Lord give you guidance that will help you through. I'm going to tell you what some other things you need to get you through. But, but, Revelation says, outside the gates of the city, the reject are dogs ha! and with the same line in the same line he called dogs they are also what sorcerers what do you call those guys the waganga yeah are sorcerers and in the same batch are sexual immoral people and in the same batch are Murderers and the same batch are idolaters. And look at this. And whoever loves and practices what? Lie. Yes. I think this is my personal opinion. I think there are going to be a lot of beep beeps at the kingdom. Not because of homosexuality or, or murder or revelry. Or, no, no, no. I think what will go off is lie. Yeah. You know why? Because there are too many Christians who belittle lie. Not a big thing. In God's eyes, it's big. He says Satan is the father of lies. Are you with me? So when we speak lies, Jesus says we become children of Satan. And if you're a child of Satan, beep, beep, you can't pass through. So if you have been a baptized member of the church and find yourself practicing lie, 
for whatever reason, you're going to have a problem at the pearly gates. Is the church with me? Yes. Okay, let's move on. To the folks at Ephesus, so we, we hear it all over the church, the same thing comes back again. You can't read Bible and don't come across these things. He says, Paul says, let all, come on, let me read. Let all bitterness and what else? Wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking. Talking bad about other persons. Paul says we should, we should put those away with something else. Malice. Members of God's church cannot engage in malice. No matter what they did to you. The church of the living God, right? You cannot. So if somebody keeping malice with you, all right, they can keep malice with you, but you're not supposed to be keeping malice with them. Is the church with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you function at a higher level. It doesn't matter how long you're in this church. It doesn't matter what position you have. If you are a malice keeper, beep, beep, at the pearly gates. You know, there are hard working members of the church, but they struggle with something that will go off. Beep, beep. And that is my fear as a pastor. We're not smoking, we're not drinking, we're not having sex out of marriage, we're not doing those big things, but there are some little things. You know, in marriage council, we say it is the little things that cause the problem. Mm hmm? Paul says, put them away. Instead, he recommends that the church be kind one to another. And what else? Tender-hearted. What else? Forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. So now, now, I have, I want everybody to turn your eyes on me. I have the biggest surprise of all. I'm a pastor in this church for 30 years. And the more I read the Bible and dig, excavate the word, is the more I get worried. Worried for my church. And I'll tell you why. Because some stuff come up in the scripture that just blows your mind. And this is one of them. In Matthew 25, verse 31, Jesus spoke this stuff. You, 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 you may have read it, but I'm going to give me, give me your permission to bore you because I'm going over it. Jesus says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory and all the nations will be all the nations including Kenyans will be gathered before him and he says and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats and then he said he will set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on the left hand. Left hand. Okay. He says, then the king will say to those on the right hand, come you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Is the church with me? So he separates the two, separates the two group. The goats on the left. Sheep on the right, wicked on the left, righteous on the right. Is the church with me? Good. Then he'll say to the guys on the right, the righteous ones, come enter the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For, I underline the word for, and I highlight it. For. In fact, I have a whole sermon entitled for. Four, here's what grabs my attention, members of the church. God is about to give us 
the condition under which he will let us in. The prerequisite for entrance in the kingdom. And it seems to me every single person who has heaven on their mind should be studying this text because the prerequisite is there. Come enter my kingdom for I was hungry and you gave me food. What? I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison in Nairobi and you came to look for me. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Shh. Here's what troubles me. On that list, on that list, it didn't say, come in, or you study your Sabbath school lesson frequently. Come in, because you pray every day. Come in, because you're a vegetarian. Come in, because you keep the Sabbath. Come in, because you return faithful tithe and offering. The things I'm looking forward for to be in the list that I was taught in church is not there. It's not there. Come in because you have been a faithful preacher of the gospel. Come in because your whole office is in the church. Come in. No, 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 no. It's not there. The things I was expecting. Come in because you're a Sabbath school teacher. Come in. It's not there. <laughs> Come in because I was naked and you clothed me. Which means, which means, which means, which means. I could study my Bible from day to night. I could preach like Paul and sing like angel and hold all the offices in the church. I could be in the church for 40 years and die, born in the church and die in the church. I can still lose my way. Because I never, I never visited a soul. I never share a bread. I never visit the sick. I've never done any of the ministry of Jesus Christ when he was here. So here's what's fascinating. Here's what's fascinating. <laughs> I, 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 listen, I love Bible. Bible is just amazing. The guys who got the green light to come in to the kingdom, those on the right, when they heard Jesus says, come in because you did this thing, they were surprised. Everyone, every one of them was surprised. They were surprised. They said, hold on, Jesus. Verse 37. Then the righteous answer him and says, hold on, Lord, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. We thank you for let us in, letting us in. We are grateful that you let us in. But we have a little problem. Because we can't remember. Come help me. We can't remember when. Yeah, we can't remember. When, 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 when did we see you hungry and feed you? When? When did we see you uh, in Nairobi thirsty and give you a drink? We can't remember. When? 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 Remind. When? 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 We have a problem. Lord, we appreciate the fact you let us in. But honestly, we can't remember doing any of this stuff to you. When did we see you a stranger and took you in naked and clothed you? When? Or when did we see you sick? But you don't get sick. And in prison? You have never been in prison. And come to you. So thank you for letting us in. But we can't accept it because we can't, to be honest with you, we can't remember us doing those stuff. Amazing. And then the king will answer. This is Jesus talking. He says, and the king will answer and say unto them, I say to you, in as, help me read, in as much as you did to, to, one of the least. Now, who's least? 
Not the guys who have everything. No, 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 no. The beggar on the street. The person who can't change his clothes this morning. The mama who don't know where dinner is coming from. Hey, hey, hey. The people in hospital who have no family member to look for them. Those who are rotting in the, in the prison and nobody comes to look for them. But oh, Jesus says, the least, when you did to one of the least, of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Now, hear me, hear me. If that is so, then shouldn't Nairobi Central be holistically invested in these things? So the guys, so the forbidden ones, the ones on the left, who were rejected, here is a story with them. Then he will say to those on the left, the goats, who line up to come into the kingdom, they line up to come in the kingdom. Oh, no, no, no. Beep, beep. <laughs> beep, beep. Hey, hey. What's the problem, Lord? Oh, depart from me, you curse. Into what? Everlasting fire. If there is a beep, beep on you at the pearly gate, my dear friend, your destination is everlasting fire. This is why this thing is so serious. Prepared for the devil and his angel. Why were they disqualified? Why was there a beep, beep at the, mercy, at the pearly gates? For, see the word for coming back again. For, you lose your soul. For, I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, you did not take me in. Naked and you did not close me. Sick you didn't, and in prison, you didn't visit me. Didn't do any of those things. You passed me on the road to church and back every morning. You had no care for me. And they also answered him and said, Lord, that's not fear. Because we don't, oh Lord, we don't remember when we ever pass you and don't look for you. We don't remember you being sick and, and we don't visit you. We don't remember you being hungry and we don't feed you. We don't remember. So remind us, when did we see you hungry, thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and didn't minister you? When did you see that happen? Because we don't, we don't think this is fear. And the Lord says, he will answer him saying, I say unto you, inasmuch as you did not do it, call that the sin of omission, that you did not, it's not what you did wrong, it's what you should have done and didn't do. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's not just lying, go beep, beep, and stealing, go beep, beep, and adultery, go beep, beep. No, 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 no. If you did not do what you should have done, there's going to be a beep, beep. And here's where my problem in the church, many church members, many baptized church members are not aware. Oh, they're not, dry, not lying, they're not stealing, they're not beating up their wife, they're not doing all these things. No, 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 no. And they feel comfortable that all is well in church. Oh, no. But are you doing what is required? If not, there's a beep, beep. There's a beep, beep. And these will go away in everlasting punishment, but the righteous into everlasting life. So this is a good time to ask you. If you are passing through the pearly gates right now, right now, this very moment, do you think there will be a beep, beep? Take half a minute of my time and, and answer that question for yourself. Irrespective of how long you're in the church. Irrespective of your office. Based on what we just said a while ago. Do you think you will pass through beautifully or will there be a problem? So, if you sense there is a problem, the question is, how, brother preacher... How do I guarantee a passage through this body scanner? How do I guarantee entrance in the... How do I guarantee? I don't want to go there wondering whether I'm going to have a beep, beep. No, 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 no. I want to guarantee. Is there any way to guarantee to pack my bag and know I'm bound for the kingdom? Hey, is there any way to be sure? 
Last night we had some folks who were not too sure. Is there, this sermon is for you. Is there any way to be sure that when all my labor on earth is over, I walk through the kingdom? Well, yes. I remember in the story of the ten virgins, I remember, Elder George, I remember that the ones that went through without any beep beep, yeah, <laughs> the ones that passed through and went into the wedding, they had oil in their vessels with their lambs. Come on, say with me. They had what? Oil in their vessel. Key word there is what? With. With. That, that one word makes the difference between the lost and the saved. They had oil in their vessel with their lambs. Meaning they had extra oil. Ha! Huh. That's going to make the difference between those who go through and those who have the beep beep. So what does that extra oil mean, says Ellen White? It's the, watch me, it is the abiding presence of who? The key word here, the abiding presence. In other words, it's not a temporary visit of the Holy Ghost. It is the Holy Ghost taking up residence in your soul. Are you with me? Yeah, it's not a Sabbath morning Holy Ghost. No, 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 no. It's a Monday morning Holy Ghost, Tuesday morning Holy Ghost. It's a pr abiding presence of the Holy Ghost. That's make the difference. If we're going to make it to the kingdom, we have to have the abiding presence. You know what the text says in verse 10? While they went to buy the, 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 these guys who didn't have extra oil, the bridegroom came and those who were ready with the abiding presence always, Holy Ghost filled their lives went in with him to the wedding and the door was shut. So, all eyes on me, watch this, watch this. So I was fascinated by this and I realized, okay, 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 okay. Very clearly in my mind, very clearly in my mind, if I'm going to pass through the scanner at the pearly gates, I will definitely have to have, help me preach, have to have what? The Holy Spirit. And so I start to research this thing. And I notice that the first thing Jesus did after his resurrection, John 20 verse 22, the Bible says, and when he had said this, he, he called the disciples together and he did what? Come help me read, he did what? He breathed on them and said what? Receive he the Holy Spirit. Oh, because you can't pass through the pearly gates without him. Says Ellen White on the subject. This was, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me. I can't preach without Ellen White. This was the initial deposit. Oh, I love this. This was the initial deposit of the Holy Spirit. can't function in God's church without it, without the Holy Spirit, without him. So the Lord gave him the Holy Spirit. And then I noticed, I keep researching, and then I noticed, oh, he did that just after he resurrected and about to leave, breathe upon them the Holy Spirit. And then we know, we know that he went to heaven and came back, and he spent 40 days after his resurrection, and when he was about to leave permanently, Ah, Acts 1, something strange happened. In being assembling together with them, he commanded them not to part, depart Jerusalem, but to wait for what? The promise of the Father, which he said you have heard from me. And by the way, that promise is the Holy Spirit. Here's it, verse 5. Help me read. 1, 2, 3, let's read. For John truly baptized you with what? Pause. There's a comma there. And my English teacher said, where there's a comma, I should... Pause. Yes, so pause. John already baptized you with 
water. And I want to talk to Nairobi Central and those of you watching online. If all you got so far is a baptism by water, when you reach the pearly gates, you're going to be a beep beep. And I begin to ask myself, how many members in my church are baptized by water? Full stop. Jesus says, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit, the oil, not many days from now. Ah, ah. That's the only way you're going to make it into the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit. Verse 8. But you shall receive power. When you get the baptism of the oil, you will also receive... That word power in the Greek is dunamis, from which you get the word dynamite. You'll get, you'll get, you'll get dynamite power. Amen. To preach the gospel with power. To evangelize with power. To testify with power. Power. You can tell when people have the baptized of the Holy Spirit, you know, because when you have some little fenke fenke preacher, no power. Cowards in the pulpit. Oh, I can't say certain things because certain people are going to be offended. No power. When the Holy Spirit comes down upon you, you will see power when, when it comes upon you. And, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea, Samaria, and other parts of the world. Then it became, clear, it became clear to me that we will not pass through the pearly gates until we are fully baptized in the Holy Ghost. No matter how many Sabbaths you keep, no matter how strict a vegetarian you are, that's not what's going to bring you through the kingdom. So Jesus says, when he comes, when you get that Holy Spirit, he will, I highlight a word up there, he will what? Guide you. Amen. So watch this. Let me tell you how it works. When the Spirit takes residence in your soul, when you are controlled by the power of the Holy Ghost, when somebody lies on you, you won't lie on them. When somebody malice you, you won't malice them. Is the church with me? Yeah, when somebody speak evil of you, you won't speak evil of them. No, 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 because there's a Holy Ghost power that directs your life. We talk about addiction a while ago. If you're addicted to pornography, when the Holy Spirit starts to take control of your life, he's not addicted to pornography. So he will keep you, he will guide you. If you're addicted to alcohol, the Holy Spirit don't drink alcohol. So he'll allow you to pass the rum bar, singing, I'm marching to Zion. Because when he comes, yeah, that's why the songwriter says, live out thy life within me, O Jesus, King of Kings. When he takes residence in you, the things you used to do, you do them no more. Not you, not you, but because the power of the Holy Ghost is inside of you. Is the church with me? Now I, now I close. It was just recently, I've been in the church for all these years. I'm in this church 45 years now. It's just recently, I stumbled on this text. Whoa. It's in your Bible. It has been in my Bible for a long time. I read it, I read over it, over and over and over and over. Didn't see the text until one day I was preparing for some evangelistic sermon and I bump into the text. Here is Paul to the church at Ephesus. 
Ephesians 1 verse 13, talking about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Here's what Paul says. I'm going to read it slowly because it's a mouthful. Paul says, in him, and that him, that him is in capital H, meaning Christ. In him you also trusted, comma, after you heard the word of truth, comma, the gospel of your salvation, semicolon, stop a little longer than the comma. Is that all right? Take your time. In whom also, comma, having believed, comma, you were, <laughs> you were sealed with what? With the Holy Spirit of promise. Hey, 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 hey. So any baptized member of the Nairobi Central who plans to make it to the kingdom, the first thing that must happen, you must first be sealed. Is the church with me? No, who does the sealing? Holy Spirit, which means if you have no Holy Spirit, there will be no... Is the church with me? Uh -huh, uh -huh. But notice there's a comma. The sentence is not finished. Am I correct? How many English, any English teacher here? Any English teacher? Oh, one? I better be careful. Of. The, se the sentence is not finished. Is the church with me? Come on, you choir, watch this, watch this. So, when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ and you got baptized and you believe, yes, yes, the text says, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The Holy Ghost sealing you. And there's a comma. So I'm going over to the next verse. Verse 14. That Holy Ghost who seals you, he is the, he is the what? Guarantee of our inheritance. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. If you use the King James Version, the word up there is, he is our earnest. And I was using the King James Version and I said, no, he's our earnest. What's earnest? That's not in my vocabulary. So I had to go look it up in Greek. Earnest. And the word means, another word for it is guarantee. But the definition for it is, it's a, watch me, it's an accounting terminology, which means that which you use to make a deposit to hold a contract. Ah, hold on, hold on. It means, it means, it means when you go to the furniture store to buy a new bedroom set, but you don't have all the money at that time, they allow you to make a deposit. And when you make that deposit, it seals that contract. Is the church with me? They can't sell that thing anymore. No, 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 no. Because there's a contract on it. Hey, hey, hey. So Paul says, hang on, watch this, watch it. So Paul says, when you receive the Holy Spirit in your life, it's a down payment on your eternity. So you are guaranteed to pass through the pearly gates without a beep beep. No, 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 no. Notice how, hey, all those accountants in the, order, on the congregation, watch this. Notice what Paul says. He says it's a deposit, amen, guaranteeing your inheritance until, until, <laughs> until the redemption of your purchase possession. When will that redemption takes place when Jesus comes back again. Is the church with me? But until that time, God sent the Holy Spirit on those who believe in him as a deposit on your soul. Whoa. 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 Whoa, whoa, whoa. In Jamaica, we say, let that soak. Digest that. 
Oh, oh, oh. So they speak. Hey, so the Holy Ghost is not about speaking in tongues. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It's about a deposit on your soul. So how do I how do I fit that in? If you sit in church this morning or at home watching via television and you don't have the Holy Spirit in your life, then I'm here to tell you upon the authority of God's word, there is no deposit on your soul. There's no guarantee that you will enter. You are up on the shelf available for sale. No matter how long you were baptized, no matter what activities in the church, no matter what position you held, you are on the shelf available for sale because there's no deposit on you. So here's the appeal then. Is there a deposit on your soul. So, oh, my time is running out. And I have to let you out because some people want their lunch. So let me wrap this up and send you. Now, now, now. Now I understand. Watch me. When David mess up with Bathsheba. You remember that stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah. When he had sex with the man's wife and killed the man and committed this huge crime in Israel, David was sure that he's a dead man. So when he went back to the sanctuary and threw himself down and cried out for forgiveness for seven days fasting and wept, he begged God for a couple of things. And one of the things he listed, here's it, Psalm 51. He says, help me read. He says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew the steadfast spirit in me. Then verse 11, he says, and he says, do not, help me read everybody. Do not cast me away from your presence. And whatever you do to David... David is begging you one thing. Do not take the Holy Spirit from me. Why? Because David understood that's the deposit on his soul. Say, God, I know I mess up, but I'm begging you, leave the deposit on my soul. Oh! Don't take the deposit. Don't take the deposit. Because if you take the deposit, David is available for sale. And that old Satan will come for me. Leave the deposit on my soul. And God heard him and left the deposit. If you mess up like David, then I'm here to tell you, ask God for the same thing. God, wash me and cleanse me and fix me up. But whatever you do, whatever the consequence of my sin, please do not take your Holy Spirit from me. So how do, how do we receive the Holy Spirit? Just in case, this is my last text. Just in case you don't have the deposit on your soul, and you would like to get it. How, how many of you would like to get the deposit on your soul? Reason. Lord, I want the deposit on my soul in double portion. Okay? How do you get it? Do you keep the Sabbath to get it? No. Do you return tithe and offering to get it? No. That, all those things are good, but that's not what gives you the deposit on your soul. Do you have to tarry all night? No. How do you get it? If you want the Holy Spirit, how, how do you really get the Holy Spirit if you want the Holy Spirit? Do you have to be a good vegan? Vegetarian? No. So what do we have to do to get the Holy Spirit? Oh, the, the answer is so simple, it blows your mind. Here's it. I mean, Luke chapter 30, 11, verse 13. It says, Jesus says, If you then, being evil, and you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give you hope? 
the Holy Spirit to those who? I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. How much more will your Heavenly Father be willing to give you the deposit, the down payment on your soul to those who ask? So here is my appeal. Very simple. When I saw that text, I went on my knees and I asked God, Lord, just double check. <laughs> Lord, just, just double check to make sure the deposit is on me. Amen? Just double check. So here's my appeal. I don't care how long you've been baptized in this church. I don't care what office you hold. None of that will be useful at the pearly gates. Here's my appeal. If you're in the audience this morning, and you're not too sure that you have the deposit on your soul, you're making that pledge in the name of Jesus. God, I am not leaving this church today until I guarantee that the deposit in my soul. So I am asking you, send me the deposit because I'm not too sure I have it. If that describes you, may I invite you to stand with me. I'm not too sure you have it. I'm not too sure you have it. I want the deposit on my soul. I want the deposit on my soul. Stand with me. Stand with me. Stand with me. We don't keep church for church sake. The reason we have church is that when we're ready to pass through the pearly gates, there is no beep beep. Come this Sabbath morning. Come this Sabbath morning. We have a baptismal service, baptism by water. If I had enough time, I would have told you, I would have told you that every true baptism, Holy Ghost come down. Mm -hmm. When Jesus was being baptized, guess what? Holy Ghost come down. Peter encouraged the folks to repent of your sins, get baptized and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Come Sabbath morning, Holy Ghost will be coming down. And some individuals will give their heart to the Lord in baptism. Can the church say amen? amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they will have the deposit on their soul. As I close this message today, I'm going to be obedient to the same Holy Spirit. There are some of you in this congregation that do not yet have that deposit on your soul. And like David, your expressed desire this morning, Lord, you may not even been baptized as yet. Maybe you were baptized and left the church. Maybe you fall weak. Maybe you got messed up like David. I don't know what the circumstances, but if you are worried that the Holy Spirit is not on your life, that the deposit is not on your soul, and you want to testify to whole heaven and earth. God, above all things that you do, I am asking you, put that down payment on my soul. I'm going to invite you to come, because I'm going to pray with you up here. I'm going to invite you to come. I'm going to invite you to come. I am going to invite you to come. I'm going to invite you to come. It says, hey God, this coming Sabbath, invite the pastors to join me. Come on up, pastors. Hey Lord. This coming Sabbath, I'm putting my life in God's hand. Come, 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 come. I don't have much time. Come, come, come. I don't have much time. Come. You plan to give your heart to the Lord this Sabbath. Come, come. You plan.
like to give your heart to the Lord this hour? God bless you. Come. Lord, I need the deposit on my soul. God bless you. Come. 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 God bless you. Come. I want the deposit on my soul. God bless you. God bless you. Come. 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 God bless you, my sister. Come. I want the deposit on my soul, Jesus. Come. God bless you. I see you coming. On the balcony. Come. Says, God, I'm walking for the deposit. Put that down payment on my soul. God bless you. Be deep on the pearly gates. Come. God bless you. Come, come, come. Come. I see some movement on the balcony. Come. It's a long walk. Come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I see you coming. God bless you. I see you coming. Come. Say another. Praise the Lord. They're coming. 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 Come. Come. Secure your soul salvation. Come. Guarantee that deposit on your soul. Come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come. God bless you. Come. God bless you. Come. Come mothers, come fathers, come husbands, come wives, come children, come, we're going home together, come, God bless you, God bless you, I see you coming, God bless you, I see you coming, I see you coming, beep beep, at the pearly gates, we can't afford that, come, God bless you, oh master, sterling. God bless you, you're coming, God bless you, you're coming. God bless you, you're coming, God bless you, you're coming. God bless you, you're coming. It's a long walk from the balcony. Thanks be to God. Come. God bless you. 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 Come, come, come. God bless you. I see you coming. I see you coming from the back. God bless you. Come. God bless you. I see you coming. God bless you. I see you coming. God bless you. Come. Dear another. Dear another. Dear another. God bless you. I see you coming. Praise the Lord. They're still coming. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I must, I must draw this appeal down to its close. My time is already gone. And if I need extra time, I have to have it voted. Can I, can I place a motion for five minutes more? Five more minutes? All in favor say aye. Those opposed nay. It's carried. But this is life and death matter. This is life and death matter. Good song. This is life and death matter. Hear me, brethren. Hear me, hear me, hear me. Hear me, members of the church. Hear me, officers of the church. Hear me, those who are in Nairobi, wherever in the world you're watching. Hear me. You don't want a beep beep at the pearly gates. You don't want that. So if you stand in church this morning or at home and you sense that the deposit is not in your, on your soul this is a moment to step out of your seat let it be recorded in heaven that you came to the altar and like David you asked God place that Holy Ghost in my life place that deposit on my life for the last time come if that describes you, come, 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 come. This is between you and God. Come, save your soul. Come. You may be in the church for a mighty long time. Come. God bless you. Come. God, I want, want the deposit. 
on the deposit, on the guarantee. Yeah, Jesus, in that cross. Come, saints of the living God, come. another is there another is there another if you need help to walk up just grab a friend's hand and say come with me I want to secure my soul salvation before it is too late this is my final call is there another in the name of Jesus come near the cross near the cross is there another, so is there another? So final call is there another Can the church say, praise the Lord. 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 Dear another, I know it's a far journey down. We'll sing the third stanza of the same song. From the 
balcony. I know it's a fight. I know it's a fight. But if you if you experience that struggle in your soul, yield and give God the victory. Dear Nava, maybe you're at home struggling, not too sure. You have the Holy Ghost on your life. Oh, this is the time to go down on your knees. God, give me the Holy Ghost. Just in case there's anybody else. Just in case this coming Sabbath, this coming Sabbath, this coming Sabbath, you have not yet given your heart to the Lord. This coming Sabbath. Yes, Jesus, this coming Sabbath. This coming Sabbath. This coming Sabbath will be the day of victory. Be my glory. be the glory great things he has done when we reach the pearly gates and the saints of Nairobi going through there shall be no beating because we have made our God bless you God bless you God bless you two more souls for the kingdom amen God bless you there shall be no beating because we have made our calling an election sure. We are filled by the Holy Ghost. There's a deposit on our soul. I'm going to turn over to our host pastor. He will assign praying to these folks and give us the instruction. Pastor. Thank you. Um, after prayer, we will request all those of you who have come up front, we go through this door so that we have a moment with you there and also have a special prayer for you. So those of you who have come here after prayer will go join through this door to the other end. I want to invite um, our leader, uh, Pastor Makori, to come and pray for uh, this team. And um, just to once again remind um, the baptism class, after lunch at 2, exactly at 2, again, we will meet outside there at the tent. We And try to come as early as possible. We see whether we're going to fit there because the numbers now have swollen uh, so that we see whether we are able to fit or not. So please don't waste time exactly at 2. Let's all join there so that we have our time together. Let us pray. Eternal Heavenly Father, we stand to glorify and praise your name. That in keeping with the teaching of the Bible, that this gospel shall be preached to every creature, mm. and whoever believes will be baptized. Now we have been blessed with very many people who have come for baptism. We know it is your command, and they have responded to your command. Now we know that as they are prepared for this baptism, you will give the deposit of the Holy Spirit to keep them, yes. to guide them, to bar every evil thing from coming into their lives, so that when everything is said and done, and you come a second time, may they find free access into the eternal kingdom. We want to praise your name for the speaker who has brought your word very clearly and it has come into the hearts of uh, your people and it has appealed to all these who have come here. So now we want to pray that uh, take their hand, walk with them as you walk to the Enoch of old until that day when we shall enter the glorious kingdom which you went to 
uh, prepare for us. Bless this church that will nurture them. Bless them as they plan to give a nurturing environment. They are young, most of them are young people. We want to ask that we stretch our hands and hold them and help them grow in nurture and admonition of your word, that we shall be available for them when they are struggling with one thing or another in this evil kingdom, that we shall be available to give them the right guidance. Bless them. Bless the speaker. Bless this church and bless all other churches. Bless, pass your blessing through all the come meetings throughout this uh, union and uh, all the unions and wherever they are being conducted to the honor and glory of your name, the good of the church and the salvation of people is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.